topological insulators. Topological insulators are a new class of materials with properties never encountered before. This presentation discusses the basic theory and material properties of the two-dimensional topological insulator. Topological insulators are novel materials with properties that could revolutionize among a multitude of fields the paradigm of digital technology. We rely on these digital devices to do a whole lot of things, from GPS to gathering information about almost anything from around the globe. Modern day life is indebted to these technologies. As the digital age progresses, so do the demands we make on these devices. But the computation that these devices carry out actually requires enormous amount of energy. We don't often realize it as most of these computations are happening in cloud servers, not on our phones or laptops. These server farms use incredible amount of energy, which almost doubles every year. We have also reached a point where we can no longer improve our silicon transistors. This is where the discovery of topological insulators holds the key for efficient computation. In the following sections, we dissect the topic into three questions. One, what is topology? Two, what is an insulator? Three, what is topological about insulators? Let's start with topology. Topology is a branch of mathematics that focuses on the fundamental properties of objects. Topological properties do not change when an object is gradually stretched or bent as they are all continuous deformation. A donut and a coffee cup look the same to a topologist, whereas a muffin is distinct from either. All these shapes can be characterized by the number of holes they have. The coffee cup and donut have one and we can continuously deform one to another and this will preserve the number of holes. A muffin has no holes and we can't transform it into a donut or a cup without tearing or breaking it. The mathematical formulation of this invariance is given by the gauss bonnet theorem, according to which when we carry out this integration over the entire surface, we get the topological invariant, the genus, which signifies the number of holes the object has. For example, the muffin having no hole has a genus of zero, the cup and the donut with one hole has a genus of one, and this particular loop with two holes has a genus of two. Now let's talk about insulators. From this animation, it is quite evident that insulators do not conduct electricity. However, a more cogent understanding comes from band theory, according to which insulators are materials with large forbidden gap between their conduction and valence band. To understand the band theory, we need to talk a little bit about electrons and how they behave in materials. If we consider a free electron, its momentum, which is a vector quantity, can have both positive and negative values. Its energy, a scalar, can however only be positive. So we have this particular relationship between its energy and momentum as illustrated by this curve. If we take this electron and put it inside a crystal with periodic arrangement of atoms, the electrons will start to experience a periodic potential. As a result, few things can happen. One is that there is Bragg scattering when it reaches the edge of the Burwell zone boundary. Second, there is an energy gap that opens up due to the difference in the overlap of elect some electron wave functions with the ions with maximum overlap and some other electron wave functions overlap minimally. They have a difference in energy between these and thus this gives rise to an energy gap. So this lets us describe two kinds of electronic matter. One is if we have one electron per atom, it actually half fills the lower band and it gives rise to a metal. And on the other hand, we have an, two electrons per atom, which completely fills the lower band. If we apply an electric mean, electric field, it creates a net momentum for electron in a metal. And as a result, it conducts electricity. Whereas an insulator, we have a full lower band and it, the electric field doesn't do anything and it cannot create any net momentum. And so the material do not conduct electricity. Now let's talk about topological phases of matter. The first topological phase of matter was not topological insulator. It was the quantum hall insulator. This is yet a different kind of insulation. Let us look at what a quantum hall insulator is. We take a clean two dimensional free electron gas system. We pass a strong magnetic field through it. Classically, what happens is that these electrons in the system begins to move in the cyclotron orbit. 
if we look at the wave picture of these electrons we see that these waves are kind of curled up on each other saying they have to come back around to meet each other head to face now there are different ways in which the waves can do that and consequently we have an integer number of different wavelets going around that loop when we solve for the energy relation of these electrons we get a solution which we can map onto the harmonic oscillator and they have this ladder of energies with the type with the cyclotron frequency these energy levels are called the lambda level this means that these electrons now appear in discrete energies and their energy versus momentum relation has this hugely degenerate levels where the electrons reside and these gaps where it cannot reside this would mean that the system would essentially be an insulator however when we experimentally observe the conductance of the system we see what we see is very unexpected we see that in the longitudinal resistance for many values of magnetic field density the resistance is absolutely zero even more interesting perhaps is that the transverse hole resistance have some regions where it play twos now if we calculate the hole conductivity it turns out to be quantized what is happening here all of this unexpected results were begging for some explanation and it was indeed for this explanation that the nobel prize in 1980 was awarded the understanding of this effect really comes from when we think about what's happening around the boundary of the sample the electron at the boundary of the sample can complete a full revolution so they go around through these skipping orbits the direction of the state is set by the direction of the magnetic field if you were to reverse it it would reverse these extra electrons that live near the edge have additional energy and momentum states that are inside the gap so the lines inside the gap represents the electrons in the edges this means that we can never have a system filled up just beneath the gap because there is always going to be some extra stray uh, those live around the edges that would fill in these gaps these states can conduct perfectly because there is just only one way around the edge and they can never turn around in six directions if the electrons encounter an impurity a right in a regular metal they will just scatter back but here they don't have the option to do so and all they can do is circumvent around these impurities this was the reason why the longitudinal resistance dropped to zero as we are essentially turning off these back scattering channels the topologically ordered phases have a response function that are topologically invariant this is So that is this quantity does not change in the continuous deformation like the number of holes in the donut cup deformation many topological invariant quantities come about from integration of a geometrical quantity in solid state physics like in the integer quantum hall effect the topological and topological insulator the brewer zone plays the role of the surface and the bury phase acts as the curvature the bury or geometric phase is acquired when the system is subject to a cyclic adiabatic process and is further explained in the term paper quantum hall physics is also observable it's only observable under external magnetic fields about 20 30 tesla and at milli kelvin speeds uh, there are few exceptions but this is mostly the case so the question really is can we recreate this phenomenon at room temperature with no external magnetic field now this is a profound question in physics ordered states appear under symmetry breaking like in the case of liquid crystals which break translational symmetry and under magnetic fields which lead to quantization of space by breaking rotational symmetry so we think of space that can function as a replacement for this external magnetic field this is exactly what is happening in topological insulators where the bulk state is insulating and the edges are conducting the solution lies in electron spin orbit coupling the external magnetic field is essentially replaced with effective magnetic field resulting from these couplings obviously the electrons with two different spins would experience magnetic field differently so instead of getting one state at the edge of the sample we get two states as the states are spin polarized and have a different direction they cannot make any u turn since to do so the electrons will have to flip their spin as as long as you have a known magnetic impurity and time reversal symmetry is preserved there will be no u turn scattering and hence the edges act as perfect conducting state this is the two dimensional topological insulator in conclusion we have a system that has electric current where the electrons are forced to move in one direction this translates into a current with non fluctuating non attenuating intensity Moreover even if the material is deformed to a certain extent because of the topological protection we can ensure that this current will remain constant 
The adjacent center topological insulator has perfect electron transport. No electrons scatter backward, no energy is dissipated as heat, even the number of conducting pathways can be controlled. Further, this property can also be generalized to three dimensions. This in turn can pave the way for 100% efficient electronics. This would also mean more efficient computations and exponentially faster algorithms. Thank you.